show. I am your host, Jay Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, We invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 320. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another outstanding and informative show in store for you. Today, we're going to be talking with super entrepreneur, 15-year-old Miss Michaela Ulmer, founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade. Now, if that name rings a bell to you, it may be because you've seen her on Shark Tank several years ago, where she gained an investment from Shark Damon John and has grown her lemonade business to be in over 1,800 retail locations. So make sure you stay tuned for this amazing interview with Michaela Ulmer. Now, before we get to the show, I just want to share a few things with the BEB family. First and foremost, I want to welcome all first-time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family. Please stick around until the end of today's broadcast, and I'm going to share all my social media contact information and my resource links, such as the link to my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses, and also two of my platforms I've created to help circulate dollars in the black community, BeSmartByBlack.com and HireBlackFreelancers.com. Also, this interview is on video, so feel free to go to the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and you can watch the interview live via YouTube, or you can go to the podcast. Now, let's get ready for the interview. Live with Miss Michaela Ulmer. She's the founder of Me and the Bees. Michaela, how are you uh, doing this morning? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So, Michaela, you have an amazing story. And what we want to do, we want to learn a little bit about you personally first, and then we're going to dive into your entrepreneurial journey. So, tell us who Michaela Ulmer is, where you're from. And we'll start with that. Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Michaela Ulmer. I'm from Austin, Texas, which is where I am currently. And I'm 15 years old, a junior in high school. I enjoy like reading and gardening and rollerblading. And in my family, there is my mom, dad, younger brother, Jacob, and older brother, Khalil. All right. All right. So, uh, Austin, Texas is a hotbed for uh, technology and beer, I heard, too, right? <laughs> yes, beer, music, live music, um, food, and right now, Corona, but hopefully that'll go down a little bit. <laughs> All right. So um, I just want to start off real quick uh, about your business. Now, mm-hmm. I know you have a lemonade business, and if people recognize the name, you might have seen her on Shark Tank. We'll get the Shark Tank a little bit later, but tell us about your product, Me and the Bees Lemonade, and how that all started. So Me and the Bees is a company that I started here in Austin, Texas when I was four as a lemonade stand, and the mission was to help save the bees. And so now as it's grown, my passion is to encourage and teach entrepreneurship and show that it is possible to grow a company. And we've grown from being in like one lemonade stand to being in one store to being in 1800 stores. So it's been a really amazing journey of growing it along the way. Wow. That, that's an amazing story. So four and a half, right? So how did you come up with the formulation for your lemonade? I heard something about a uh, granny Helen in there somewhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a big part of the story. If you like read the bottle, we have, all the whole story on here but 
we started when I was four. I got stung. I signed up in Acton Children's Business Fair and Austin Lemonade Day, which are two like local business fairs where kids can come up with an idea and sell a product. And so over the summer, I had to figure out what I was going to create and what I was going to sell. And one thing that happened is I got stung by two bees in one week, wow. which was not fun at all. <laughs> and I became pretty terrified of them. And then the second thing was I got a cookbook from my great granny, Helen, and it was really old and tattered. The front cover was falling off. It had ingredients like lard on it that I didn't even like know how to use in a recipe, but we found the flaxseed lemonade recipe. And so it was after doing some research on the bees and learning that they're important pollinators, that without them, we can't have a third of our food supply and our, they contribute like $16 billion to the U.S agricultural economy a year I was just like wow without them I can't have my strawberry jelly or my cheese on cheese pizza how can I help save them and so I did what any kid would do I started a lemonade stand with that in mind and so I donated 10 percent of the proceeds to organizations that help the bees wow that's amazing that is amazing so the first batch that you made did mom and dad and the rest of the family make help you make the batch or did you do that on your own the first batch was, first, it was a mess. It was all <laughs> over our kitchen counters, um, and it was really last minute. It was the day I saw Lemonade Day happening, and I wanted to join, but the day had already been over. The day had already ended for Lemonade Day, and so it was like a really last minute effort because I wanted to make my own Lemonade Day, and so it was not great. The lemonade didn't taste great. I used all my mom's ingredients, but it was when the fair came around with a little bit more preparation where we actually went and started a first budget and a grocery list and mm -hmm. tinkered around with multiple different recipes to see what worked. But I mean, this is probably the same with a lot of businesses. The first batch is never the final. There's a lot of like innovation and reformulating that comes in between. Oh, that's great. That, and that's a, that's a great thing that you highlighted right there. So I want all the entrepreneurs to understand that a lot of times your first iteration of your product isn't going to be the last. But the key, Michaela, is what you did is you started. You did it. A lot of people yeah. have ideas, but they never take action behind those ideas. So I commend you and your family for, for pushing forward and, and getting to where you are right now. So Thank you mentioned... You. You're welcome, sweetie. You mentioned you are in 1,800 stores right now. Yeah. I want you to roll back a little bit. Before you started going into the stores, how did you finance your business before Shark Tank? Was it mom and dad? So, <laughs> a little bit, actually. So I started very first, like, batch was made with $50 as a birthday gift from my godfather. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, $50 as a birthday gift from my uncle Alfonso. And so my dad said, the first thing you're going to want to do is make a budget. And I'm like, why would I make a budget? All you have to do is swipe that plastic card and you get whatever you need. <laughs> and so we went through the steps. He said, you have to estimate your income. You have to list your expenses. You have to figure out whether you have a profit or loss. You have to um, find ways to reduce your cost and increase sales. And you have to set goals. And so after doing that, it was a really basic budget, but we had our grocery list. And um, what I did was I made sure that I could make a profit from the stand. And no matter what, I donated. Whether we made a profit or not, I still donated to the organization. And then if we did make a profit, I would put it back in my sales account that I just opened up and use it for the next fair. And so there was one time when I wanted to like upgrade from a handheld squeezer to an electric one, and I didn't have enough money. And so my dad said, well, we can give you a loan. And it was like, I think it was around $25 of a loan for my parents and I had to pay it back. He's like, I, I won't give you any interest. But when we started, it was, it was friends and family, you know, first round of investment, friends and family and using whatever money that I got from the stand to give, save and spend. That's great. Well, I, I want to say this right now before I forget. Uh, I want to commend your parents, uh, your family, and your friends for having that vision and supporting you. And what you're doing because I think that's so critical right now uh, for all entrepreneurs in any stage that they have that support that they need so 
uh, I want to give kudos to mom, dad, and all your family and friends that supported you because that's that's huge. That is huge. Yes, uh, I think mm-hmm. I think that when I went to my parents saying like I want to figure out a way to save the bees all year round, instead of saying wait till you're older or you know maybe later, they were like, okay, we'll go do your research or look at this YouTube video just to. I guess sparked that interest instead of kind of burning it out. So they were, they didn't um, do it all by themselves. They always made me a part of the process and made sure I was learning along the way too. That's great. That's that's amazing. My daughters, um, they're three years apart. So when they were younger, um, they wanted to get Uggs. I think my oldest daughter was about 10 and my youngest daughter was seven. So they wanted all these Uggs and all these clothes and stuff. So I said, you know what? You guys need a business. So, <laughs> so we started what we call a water ice business, which is Italian ice. And we went to a, uh, a minor league baseball stadium and we were there for three years and ended up having like two or three different carts in other stadiums. And when I hear stories of children like you who started early and they had to support their parents, it just, I, as soon as I heard your story, I thought about my girls. And they're older now, they're 24, 21 now. But I just think about when we'd be out there all those nights scooping water ice and serving 110 degrees in the shade out there at these baseball games. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, Michaela, I want to move forward to Shark Tank because, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of people watch the show. And I wanted to ask you about that. how long – we only see a couple minutes on it. But how long was your actual pitch um, to the Sharks? Was it over an hour? Or? I, no. So the pitch itself, the whole thing is on Shark Tank. But mm-hmm. the negotiating and them explaining their deal, I think, was a was 45. Was it 45? Probably, like, anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes. So, okay. Yeah. And so they made sure to edit and get the most important parts on air because, you know, they can't include the whole thing. But there was no, like, stop, pause, say that again. They were, you just kind of ignored the cameras and it was just, like, pitching to investors. Gotcha. Okay. Now, were you able to mingle with the Sharks after the show? We, you know, we mingled, like, we met them beforehand, like, shake of hands, and then they sat down in their chairs. But... Other than that, for after the show, I have met multiple sharks at different conferences. And uh, for example, I met with, or I appeared on Good Morning America with Miss Barbara Cochran. Mm-hmm. Or um, we also met Mark Cuban at uh, another conference. I think it was like the Giving Back Fund. But it was just, we've encountered them in multiple things. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember your product. Good job. <laughs> cool, cool. So, uh, Damon was your, the shark that invested in you, correct? Yes, he was. Okay, okay great. Uh, how how involved was he uh, once you guys, once he started investing in you? Was he real hands-on or how did that process work? Yes, he actually, he, I mean, he's invested in multiple companies, so he's very busy. But he makes time for answering questions, um, linking networks, and, like, Mm -hmm. opening opportunities. And he did that for us, too. So I think it was, like, the very first year of Shark Tank, he actually came down to Austin. And we had a meeting at one of the restaurants that sold the product. And so, yes, and he's still involved today. So we still go to National Retail Federation conferences and still appear on different shows. But he still has that kind of mentorship. So whenever we have a question, if we can call him up and he'll answer for us. So, or he'll be like, oh, I'm on a call right now, but I will try to get back to you. Oh, cool. That's great. Because I know I was telling one of my friends that I was interviewing you and he was like, ask some questions about how that really works on Shark Tank. So that's for my buddy that wanted to, uh, to know, <laughs> yeah. which is cool. Now, Michaela, you said you're a junior <laughs> in high school? or yes. Junior? All right. Junior. Upcoming junior. Upcoming junior. So being in high school, having this amazing business, how do you manage the business while you're going to school? I'm sure you're doing all the other activities a a young lady would be doing, hanging out with your friends and all that good stuff. So how do you manage all that? Yes. So 
balance is often a question that I'm asked, whether it's by other kids or other entrepreneurs who are like grown and already have graduated from school. But that's something that we have to work on. Like that's something that's a constant effort. Mm -hmm. But the first thing is that schools are priority. So when school's in session, if I have homework, that takes precedence. And there are times when I'm asked to travel or I get a great opportunity to travel and it's during the school year and it's always meeting with my teachers beforehand, making sure that whatever I miss, I can either make it up while I'm gone or while I return, when I return. And then the time where I'm most involved with the company is right now during the summer. We're working on the book launch, we're working on e-commerce and um, updating the website. So that's when I have the most time, but there it is there are responsibilities during the year on weekends and on breaks. Okay, great, great. Now, um, in order to do this, I'm sure you have a team. So how many, yes. people, how many people are on your team? So that are full-time on our team, there are three, family-run company. So it's me, my mom, and office admin, and my dad, or it's actually four. But we have, most of our team is outsourced, which okay. was pretty great when we had to move to um, like remote work from COVID-19, there wasn't much of an adaptation that we had to take regarding our employees. So we have an amazing team and it's great because they all like share the visionary mission that I started Me and the Beast with. So we have um, brokers, we have sales and ops and logistics, and then we have um, marketing and PR and finance. So even though they're not full-time me and the bees yet, that might be something that we want to do in the future in like upcoming budgets, but it's a great team and we all work very well together. And so, um, yeah. All right, cool. That's, that's I like to call them my hive. <laughs> the beehive, huh? Like Beyonce. Yes. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> cool. Um, now, in terms of actual production of Me and the Bees Lemonade, I know you started out doing it yourself, but obviously I know you can't do that with the volume you're doing. How did you yes. go about finding a reputable uh, manufacturer or co-packer for your product? Yeah, so I will go to conferences and maybe meet someone in the elevator. We both noticed we have the bay at a, a, I don't know where the accent came from, a badge from the same conference. And... We introduce ourselves and I say, yes, I have a lemonade company. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. When are you doing your next stand? Um, like, that's a lot of lemons to squeeze. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of a realization. I'm like, no, we're in stores. I can't produce it myself. You need like actual manufacturer. But we started from going to plastic cups into bottles. It was after, it was when I was around eight and a half, I guess. And so... I went to a pizza shop, actually no, owner of a pizza shop came to one of my stands and he said, hey, if you can find a way to bottle your product, I'd like to carry it in our store. Wow. And so that's when my wheels started turning on bottle a product, like be one of those actual lemonades that you see on stores. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could save the bees all year round. And so after that, it was contacting anyone we knew, whether it was going to stores and seeing what bottles worked best and asking managers or asking other local beverage companies in Austin where they produced, how they figured out how to produce. But we started off with a commercial kitchen, a really small commercial kitchen, and we've outgrown, we went from commercial kitchen to co-packing. And so we've outgrown multiple, but right now we're at a current one and it allows us to scale. So if like Walmart calls us up or a really large chain and says, we want to carry your product, we don't have to say, no, we don't have the capacity because now we do. Okay, great. That's a great question uh, answer. Because a lot of times people think that aren't experienced like you, they think that they have to sit in their kitchen and make product <laughs> when really they're, they're finding and, and giving a recipe to a co-packer. So thank you for elaborating on that. Um, yeah. One of the questions I want to ask you is, what's the difference about running your business now at 15 opposed to age four? What do you think some of the biggest things are? <laughs> difference between running it at four opposed to now. Oh, well, one thing is that I can't do everything at this point. So it's realizing that I can't 
like pass every single decision or send out every single email, but I have to, you know, I have a team that helps me do that. Because when I was four, I was making the budget. I was going to the grocery stores. I was squeezing the lemons. I was like counting the money and depositing it. And at this scale, I can't do all that right now. Um, And so it's just realizing I have a team that that's able to help me with that. And then the second change is that between now and then, I think at four, it was kind of just a hobby. Like I did it maybe once or twice a year at Mm -hmm. the stand. And at this point, it's a full year thing. So we're always going to be in these grocery stores. Cool. All right. So let me ask you also, um, you had mentioned the bees and how important do you think it is uh, to start a business with a, a social message or something that's uh, environmentally friendly? What's your thoughts so on that? that? Yeah, I think that's so important. When I talk about entrepreneurship, I talk about social entrepreneurship. And social entrepreneurship is starting a business that also does good in the world, whether it's donating like a product or donating proceeds or time, like volunteer. I think that is so important for now, like starting it now and then also continue it to continuing it in the future. Um, and you may have known this, but my generation is more, they're more conscious consumers. So they're more likely to purchase products when they know that I can get this cool bracelet, but I'm also helping save the ocean at the same time. And they're more, more likely to do the research and find out which companies are social and actually stick with their goals and their mission. And so one, it's important because it's going to be better for business. Two, it's important because it is an amazing motivator. When you start a company based on like a passion, a cause, or a goal that's bigger than your company and you making profits yourself, like when you have a purpose and a and profit, mm-hmm. um, it's so much easier to persevere through those tough times because you're like, the bees need me or someone like I'm doing this for a greater good. So I think that's so important and it allows you to bring like larger groups of people together, whether it's at conferences or within your team. Now that, that makes a whole lot of sense. So um, was that your initial concept right away? Uh, once you incorporated the bees? Uh, so was, or was that something that came later on? Can you repeat that? Yeah, I said, so when you started the business, was that your initial idea to make it socially aware or socially conscious or environmentally friendly? Or is that something that came, that happened as you started getting into the business? That is, that's why I started the business. The oh, first cool. stand, I wore a bee costume. That was my mom's <laughs> idea for marketing. And I can send you a picture. But I wore a bee costume and we called it B Sweet, although it's no longer B Sweet Lemonade. It's Me and the Bees. The first name was B Sweet, and we got Avery stickers, printed them out at home, put them on the plastic cups. But it was always like why I started. And even though I never like won any awards at the business fairs that I participated in, mm-hmm. that was I kept continue doing it because I wanted to save the bees. And we also. That's probably one of the reasons why I got into stores was because I started doing workshops at store at um, like Whole Foods Market and churches and schools and have kids plant bee friendly flowers when I was around eight. And so it just the company gained notoriety, I guess, in Austin and more people heard about it. Oh, that's great. That's that's an amazing story. And I like that bee costume. Mom is a great marketer. I can tell already. <laughs> yes, she had her own marketing firm and she said okay. she's marketing team. There you go. That's what's up. <laughs> um, now, in terms of marketing, you had mentioned you're in 1,800 stores right now. How did you start yeah. to break into these national chains like Whole Foods and, and things of that nature? How did that come about? Okay, great question. So Whole Foods, actually, how do we get to Whole Foods? Whole Foods asked to carry our product for their Buzz Week. So they have, during National Honey Bee Week, they have a display, and it was this one Whole Foods in Austin. It was, uh, I think it was the first Whole Foods, because Austin is where Whole Foods began. But they wanted to have a local product, so they just called us up. They said, can we have some lemonade? 
And uh, we were like, we were happy to because we ha- already had it bottled, we had labels, and we were able to provide them with like the product. And so they ordered four cases, oh, wow. um, 12 bottles each case. And we said, you're going to want a little bit more than that. It's going <laughs> to sell it pretty quickly. And they said, no, we don't want to be stuck with product. And right. so they got their four cases. And then like half a week later, they came by and wanted eight. And it was that store and it was flying off the shelves of that store. And then other awesome locations, all their awesome Whole Foods locations picked it up along with local like wineries and restaurants. So it, we really did start locally mm-hmm. and didn't reach national levels. So in terms of like growing in width and depth, we started with growing in depth. But it was once we reached national television, mm-hmm. so Shark Tank, when we started getting customers from all around the country saying, where can I buy the lemonade? Like, it's, I really want to support you guys. And it was um, reaching out to, like, Wegmans and Gelson's, doing sales pitches, going to Expo West, which is a huge natural products expo, and pitching to any buyers that may have stopped by the booth. But that is originally how we started. It was kind of a coincidence that Whole Foods had heard of the product or that the pizza guy said, if you can find a way to bottle it, we'll carry it in our store. Oh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, and obviously with the product flying off the shelves, um, I, I assume Whole Foods started buying it for other the other locations also? Yes. So they um, they have, they have um, things that are quarterly where they pitch new products. And so pretty much it, if it was, if one product is doing well in a store, they can recommend it to other stores. And so that's when multiple stores started, um, like, contacting us to see if they could order and originally we had like this you know foldable green cart that we delivered it in but then we had to get a local texas distributor and then now we have a national distributor with unfi and kehi and we also send it directly to the stores i I got a couple more questions not going to hold you much longer just a few more questions for you um your product right now is is going crazy. You're doing tremendous business. I was on your website, and I happened to look at uh, that you're also selling uh, beeswax lip balm. How long has that product been out? The beeswax, so my goal since starting Me and the Bees was to be the Hello Kitty of lemonade. So I wanted multiple products. I wanted skincare and clothing and everything else in between. And so the beeswax was two years ago. Okay. And we wanted beeswax because, of course, honeybees make beeswax. We could also donate 10% of the proceeds. And then it's also really great for your lips. And so we started with, like, a simple vanilla mm-hmm. lip balm. And then we grew to having, um, like, berry, blackberry and honey and coconut lime, which are all really great. And we get such great people. Um, I don't know. We get such great reviews from people who have tried the lip balm and they're like, yeah, this is my go-to now. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. What, uh, yeah. any, any other products that you're looking to bring to the brand that you can talk about uh, in the future? It kind of cut out a little bit. I oh. heard any other products. Yeah. Um, do you have any other product ideas that you're going to bring to the brand in the future um, that you can talk about or, um, or are they still in development right now? <laughs> Not, I mean, other than new flavors, okay, not really. Um, but I am always trying to brainstorm other ways to come up with new products. So, right now, we have four flavors um, mint, which is the original, prickly pear, half and half iced tea and lemonade, ginger, and classic, which actually is the most recent flavor. Cool. But those are the five flavors, five flavors that we have, and we are. We just reformulated each of those to cut back 25% of the sugars because I wanted a beverage that other kids could drink as well. And we're working on, um, one, improving our e-commerce, so being able to ship more bottles Mm -hmm. because the flat rate of shipping is the same, Mm -hmm. but we really want to have customers, like, get more for their bottle lemonade. So improving e-commerce and more flavors of lemonade and then possibly other products as well, like soaps. That could be fun. Definitely. That's, that's great mm-hmm. thinking, thinking, thinking ahead. Um, as an entrepreneur for 10 years plus, which is kind of amazing in itself because you're what, only 15 now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
What do you think kids and adults can learn from entrepreneurship? I think, I think I'm going to answer the first question, but I also think it goes both ways. So I think there's a lot of things that kids and adults can learn from entrepreneurship, but there's some things that entrepreneurs can learn from kids. And so I'll start with what people can learn from entrepreneurship, which is um, problem solving. That's just one big thing because there's always going to be things that come up with, there's always going to be problems and challenges that you encounter as an entrepreneur. For example, in 2016, after Shark Tank, there was a company that said, your name's too similar to ours. You can either keep it and pay a couple million dollars or scratch it, scratch all the products that have that name on it and change it all together. And so it was identifying whether it was worth it to pay like four fifty four fifty an hour for a lawyer to fight the case or figure out how we can change the brand and actually take advantage of it and use it to expand. So problem solving is one thing. And what can people learn about entrepreneurship is being resourceful. So Dame John has a book called The Power of Broke, and there's so many other books that explain like why you need a resilience plan and a resilience plan, a resilience budget. But being resourceful, using what you have, because entrepreneurship, like success doesn't come overnight. There's a lot of work or late nights staying up um, of using what you have to make the best of it. And then for things that entrepreneurs can learn from kids, I always say dream like a kid. Um, one is that you ha you always have to stay curious. So for me, it was figuring out why the bees are dying, doing a little bit of research. So be curious. Um, the second one is get messy. So just try things, whether it's, if, if it's a food product, go and, you know, mix different ingredients. For me, it was like making a mess in the kitchen, but that's how we came up with such an amazing and delicious recipe. So be curious get messy and ask, yeah, ask questions. I guess I would go with be curious. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, before we get into your new book, I just wanted to ask you, where do you see yourself and your business in five years? Yeah, so I will probably be in college, maybe studying business. I'm actually not sure, but possibly studying business or um like political philosophy, I'm not sure what I want to do and study, <laughs> but I'm going to be in college. The business I would like to be national in a household name. So a product that everyone's heard of and um, that's in wherever local store that they can visit. And I would like to make a measurable impact on the bees. So I started Healthy Hive, which is a nonprofit that saves the bees. And I would like that to be a national, a national nonprofit as well. So we have headquarters in multiple cities. We're funding multiple research studies and um, convincing lots of campuses or schools to turn their land into bee friendly land. Wow. All right. That's great. That's great. And you mentioned something earlier, uh, you know, a purpose. And I think that when you have a business that has a purpose, not just to make money, obviously we all want to be profitable, but profitable mm -hmm. with a purpose, I think that can take your business as a young me and the bees to a different level. So that's, that's tremendous foresight and thinking uh, to do that. And we definitely appreciate that. So I wanted to flip real quick now to your book, Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid. Michaela, tell us a little bit about your book and uh, what can we expect when it does come out? It's published August 18th. And I wrote this book because I'm an entrepreneur. I get asked to do speaking engagements and unfortunately I can't accept all of them. So I'm hoping that with this book, I can share my story of starting Me and the Bees and being a student and other things that I enjoy but also teach about like financial literacy and entrepreneurship and coming up with an idea. So that's why I wrote this book. And I'm very excited to say that it's become a reality and it's being published and it's a middle grade book, but it's a really fun read for all ages to get some insight on how I started in a little bit more detail. And it really teaches, if you're an adult, it teaches you how to dream like a kid. So embrace that kid mentality when starting a company to be fearless. Um. Michaela, with your new book, how was that process of writing your book? And can you just give us a little background on, on that process? So, 
the process of writing and releasing the book is very long, as you can imagine. And and so we started a year and a half ago. We were reached out to by a book agency in New York, and so they offered to um, like represent the book. And once we had come up with the concept and idea and content that would be within the book, then they pretty much pitched it to numerous publishing. And there was a lot of interest in the book. We chose Penguin Random House and mm -hmm. began the process. And so writing the book, we kind of realized we're going to need some help. So we got some help through writing the book. Mm -hmm. And it was a round kind of a loop of releasing a chapter, editing it, editing it and then releasing another one. And so we were able to tell the story in a linear way that also sprinkled in different business ideas, or I call them business ideas, mm -hmm. and their lessons that apply to each chapter of the book. Oh, cool. That is great. That's amazing. So I can't wait to, uh, till the book uh, comes out, obviously. I'm going to get the copy of it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, show that, show that cover again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the cover, and right. then I want to show you like an example of a business idea. That's a business idea, and the fun thing about this is that it's sprinkled with pictures. Here's my bee suit. <laughs> it's sprinkled with pictures, um, like of my first label and etc. So you really get to like grow my business with me, and then use what you've learned from reading this book to grow your own, or even just adapt your mentality in your own business. What is one piece of advice or the most important piece of advice you would give to someone who's interested in starting a business? I don't think there is like a one most <laughs> important thing. Because okay. there's, there's so many different paths to entrepreneurship. So I think like some things that you should always remember is that you have to like learn from failures. Before I started Me and the Bees, I sold like wildflowers and play-doh that was one business it didn't go so well and i sold printer bracelets but it just took too long to make and i couldn't sell them for enough to like recompensate for that time so it's continue trying and use like the process of trial and error to improve your concept and idea and the next thing is to like ask for help because you're always going to have help help back at the hive so you know constantly reach out for mentors or people who may have more experience and be open to learning. And lastly, it's that it's not just the product you sell, but it's the story you tell. Powerful storytelling is so, powerful storytelling is so important. And so is the process of like building out a brand that feels authentic to your company. Those, those, are, those are three great, pieces of advice definitely and last question i have for you michaela this is going to be a tricky one now all right you ready <laughs> yes i'm ready all right if you could have a conversation with one person living or dead who would it be and why and i don't know their exact names but the three female um scientists who were stars in hidden figures oh, and yeah. like who worked at nasa I would love to have a conversation with them. And then also um, founder of Tesla, Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're both kinds of science related, but also a little bit entrepreneurial. And I've always, science has been like my favorite subject for a while. So I would like to have discussions with them. Uh, great answers, great answers. So I've gotten answers from Jesus to Oprah <laughs> Winfrey to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from all. <laughs> All types of answers, but no, those are those are good answers. That, so I mean, that would that would be pretty cool too. <laughs> exactly. Well, Michaela, I want to thank you so much uh, for sharing your time. Uh, we're definitely going to support your book, Me and the Bees Lemonade, just your products, and also Be Fearless, your book. So we're looking forward to it, and we're looking for much more to come from you in the future. I mean, you got a tremendous start, so. God knows, I don't know where you're going to be in the next 10 years. You could be, you might be running the country or something. But <laughs> Hopefully, who knows? But um, I would like to say thank you, everybody, for, you know, listening to the podcast interview in full. And also thank you for um, not only, like, hearing my story, but also going out to stores and, like, requesting them to sell the product or trying 
the bottle or following us on social media. That has meant so much and it has allowed us to grow to the size because there's no way that, you know, business can grow without customers and without a support base. And so you guys have been such an amazing support base. Thank you. And you mentioned social media. How can people follow you or, or your business? Yes. Okay. So our social media is at Michaela's Bees. So M I K A I L A S B E E S. And that's okay. on anything from Insta to Twitter and Facebook. Okay. Cool. I appreciate you so much, Michaela. I appreciate your time and continue the great work. And uh, anytime you have anything coming out, feel free to give us a call and uh, we'll put okay. you back on the platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. That was an amazing interview with 15 year old entrepreneur, Miss Michaela Ulmer, the founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade. Now, before we do some takeaways on the interview, I just want to share my social media contact information and my resource links. Now, at the top of the show, I mentioned my new book is out. A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. So if you're interested in building a successful, sustainable e-commerce business, go to anewblackwallstreet.com, pick yourself up a copy, $14.95 for the printed version, $9.95 for the e-version. Now, if you need additional assistance building your successful, sustainable e-commerce business, I've created my flagship online program titled Brand Builder Academy Elite. You can go to bbaelite.com for more information. I also have a $100 coupon to take the price down to $97. I know COVID is out here wreaking havoc on, havoc on people's incomes. So go to bbaelite.com. Once you start filling out the registration, use coupon code bbaelite 100 and it takes $100 off. Now, in addition to that, I also mentioned at the top of the show, two of my platforms I've created to help circulate black dollars in the worldwide black economy. The first one is BeSmartByBlack.com. What that is, it's a platform for black product producers to sell their products to black consumers worldwide and it's free to upload your information. So go to BeSmartByBlack.com, upload your information, it is free and connect with black consumers worldwide. Also for freelancers, if you do anything on Fiverr.com, Freelancer.com, go to HireBlackFreelancers.com, H-I-R-E, BlackFreelancers.com, upload your information, and now you can connect with black consumers and black businesses that want to hire black freelancers. Now, if you want me to come out and speak, I know it's COVID going on, so my speaking is, is really taking a hit, but once this thing breaks, just go to bookjjones.com, fill out the short form, and I'll get right back to you. All of that information I just gave you, you can go to bebconnect.com. That's bebconnect.com, and all of that information will be there, all of those links. Now, if you want to connect with me via social media or reach out to me with any questions or whatever, you can hit me on my email at jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. That's J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Facebook, just go to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, connect with me there. Twitter, jjones001, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001. Instagram, jjones for real, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S, the number four, R-E-A-L. YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, family. I have additional content on YouTube that does not come out on the show. Yes, the show does come out on YouTube, but I have additional content. So go to YouTube, search Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. LinkedIn, connect with me, J. Jones, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Uh, also, if you want to be included in the BEB text line for uh, information and reminders about special events, text BEB to 555-888. BEB to 555-888. Once again, I know that's a mouthful. Just go to BEB Connect. It'll take you to a, a page on my website. All of that information and the links will be right there. BEBConnect.com. Now, let's close on out with uh, Michaela's interview. And there's a couple of takeaways that I definitely want to talk about. Uh, number one, which really stood out to me was when she started the business, her uh, uncle gave her $50 and she used that to start the business. But what really was... a uh, uh, exciting to me was is that her parents said you got to create a budget and there's some grown entrepreneurs that don't <laughs> that don't create budgets 
But what happened is they molded and, and shaped everything from the beginning. So she said, what's the budget? I got to do this, this. Am I going to be profitable? Once again, it doesn't have to be a three page business, uh, you know, uh, business plan. It can just be something as simple as a piece of paper or several sheets of paper giving you an outline about entrepreneurship, profit, profitability and things of that nature and budgeting. You got to be able to do that. Uh, something else that she said also that really stuck out to me. Um, she had mentioned a couple of things, learning from failure and trial and error. She was talking about getting messy when she st first made the first batch of the lemonade. And that's really what it takes, guys. You got to be able to get in there and mix it up to find out what the public wants. Do they really want your product or service? Or is it something that you just want to provide for people and you don't even know if they want it or not? So that really stuck out to me that there also. And she also mentioned that she had um, uh, being resourceful, problem solving. That's what business and entrepreneurship is, guys, being resourceful and problem solving. And one of the things that you see in Michaela's story is that she started basically from a concept, put things out there to the universe, started making the lemonade by hand. Then it got big to the point where she couldn't do that anymore. And they had to create or, or work with a co-packer. And that's just a manufacturer that manufactures the product to your specifications. And now she's in 1800 plus stores throughout the United States. So this is how that concept can turn into a real business. So if you look at any Fortune 500 business, all of them started with concepts. You look at DuPont, right? DuPont was selling, they started by selling gunpowder to the Americans and the French. So now DuPont is a multinational conglomerate with all different types of industries, but everything that started, started from a concept. And then the whole key with concept is execution. Are you able to execute? And I say this all the time, guys, the only three things an entrepreneur does is think, create, and execute. TCE, think, create, and execute. Thinking is easy. Creating is a little harder. The execution is the hardest. Think, create, and execute. Then Michaela and her team have been able to execute, you know, with Damon John coming in as an investor, uh, I'm sure that opened a lot of doors. And with his experience as being a successful entrepreneur, you know, you can't, you can't help but, but, but be successful with something, somebody like that behind you and over there, you know, helping you out, guiding you through that whole process and opening doors for you that you may not have had being open before, but think, create and execute. That's what an entrepreneur does. Now, we do this all the time, guys. Everybody we have on the platform, please support this young sister. She's out there doing it. She's doing things that people 50 years old aren't even doing. She's out there and she's actually doing business while still being 15 years old in high school. Okay, so there's really no excuse. If you want to do it, you'll find a way to get it done. So please make sure we, we all support Me and the Bees Lemonade and also Be Fearless, Michaela's new book, which you can find everywhere on Amazon and all your major bookstores. So please go out and support this young sister who's out there doing tremendous things right now. Also, I say this each and every week. Um, we get more and more downloads. That's because of you, the BEB family. Please continue to spread the word about the podcast and the blog. And I always say it's more than that, guys. It's a movement. It's about building an economic power base in the black economy, building an economic power base in the black economy. And it's funny, while I'm, I'm mentioning this, I uh, just got word that we now have a billion dollar bank, uh, a merger between two banks, one in D.C. and one in Los Angeles. And now the, the first billion dollar black owned bank has, has actually been uh, put together via a merger. So once again, it's all about economics. We need to be able to build the infrastructure and build entrepreneurship, and we need money to do that. So supporting black-owned banks and establishments is, is really all it's about, family. You know what I mean? Be smart, buy black. It's a conscious decision. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace.